Well, when it uh, when the livelihood empowerment against poverty launched in 2008, it was the news that 89-year-old James Akron had yearned for years. It is a source of support for food and medicine. However, delays in payment and a hike in inflation have compounded his struggles to survive in the harsh economy. The Living Standards team met at him at his Jamestown home to hear his story. Fancy, six, uh, six me. Nothing. How can I depend on you? At my age, how, why are you going to, 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 to work and then? And what do I expect help from? Living conditions is very, very difficult. So at the same time, buying medicines, especially my age, the problems, medicine. Has. That is why I told you, small, small money that has been coming to me, I have to save it. So when this uh, lift money comes, uh, thanks to the Almighty. 89-year-old Akron James Tete on the livelihood empowerment against poverty leap allowances to survive. Because he does not receive any pension, the leap grant has brought him a lot of relief. But in the last five months, his allowance has not reached him. With Ghana's economy in shambles as a result of high inflation, Mr. Kron says the delay in receiving his grant is affecting him. At the moment, I'm the head of the family of the whole Akron family. That is that that So I'm saddled with problems apart from living condition. Once you become a head of a family, it's a great responsibility. He wonders why government would delay such an important grant to vulnerable persons like him. So he now solely banks his hope on the benevolence of family members and friends to sustain him. It's been six months, right? Nothing, nothing. How are you uh, managing? Uh, well, you know, I have some small, small support from my children. You know, they are also grown up to this thing responsibilities and whatnot. They have got children, also, grandchildren and whatnot. So I, I don't depend on them. So and I don't want to do Who do you depend on? That is why I mean, I get small, small distance from the children. My, my daughter went to the oh, Daddy, take this one. James is the head of their corn family but can hardly fulfill his responsibilities because of his financial difficulties. His life now is limited to his immediate surrounding because of his failing eyesight. He shares some good old memories. <laughs> you were a boxer too. Oh, wow. And you were a farmer here. Uh, when we went to the agri everything. Uh, training. Okay. Agri college. A cinema operator. Oh, okay. Done so many things. In the mornings, he usually exercises to be in good shape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, number. Yeah, no, that's that's weak. Then <laughs> my 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 feet. Mm -hmm. When James could no longer make ends meet after losing his job at the Workers' Brigade in 1983, Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty, LEAP, supported him. He received 40 CDs bi-monthly when he registered in 2008. That afforded him food and some medications for his hypertension and diabetes. Every three months, every three months, about 
for 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 get our children or a representative that can that we send to college before then he managed menial jobs like watch repairs but that didn't fetch him much but time no one would employ him and he could not employ himself too so he always looked forward to the leap grant firstly cv cv hotel they come there and then they give you the money. Yeah. They don't put it in the bank or something. No, 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 no. We were paid that because it's that money for, 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 for 400, sometimes 200. A book where he meticulously takes records show that the last time he received a grant was in May 2022. He is unable to go for regular medical checkups and eat nutritious meals because he's unable to get much from his family and friends. Living condition is very, very difficult. At the same time, buying medicines, especially my age, between problems, medicine and whatnot. So, nothing. James welcomes government's plans to increase the LEAP grant from 65 cities to 95 cities, 19 pesos, bi-monthly, and expand the program from 344,000, 23 households to cover 2.5 million people. But the irregularity in receiving funds has become a great source of anxiety. Fancy, six, uh, six May, nothing. How can I depend on it? If you have not come in, I, uh, I know that that, that, that that is the end. At my age, how, why are you going to, 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 to work and then? And what do I expect help from? So it is only the help of the Almighty that has kept me. And those workers may be still alive. Such a touching story there. Now, let's uh, take you to Cantonment, where we understand the Ghana Fire Service is raising against time to control a raging fire that has already engulfed more than 200 shops at Cantonment. Eyewitnesses say the fire started around 4.30 a.m. And they say it took the Ghana National Fire Service more than an hour to reach the scene. Fire Service authorities say they responded in less than that time. It's been close to four hours and the fire is still raging. More than seven fire tenders have been dispatched to help douse the fire, with two more expected to join soon. My colleague Michael Papani actually joins us live with more. Michael, what more can you report? Okay, uh, Michael, if you can hear me, uh, what more can you tell us uh, about this fire? Right, you are asking for, I mean, what, what really is happening now? So, uh, these are live pictures of some fire tenders that finished uh, discharging um, water uh, into the burning furnace here. It's a difficult situation for everyone, particularly for the Ghana National Fire Service here. Who's been trying for nearly five hours now to bring to bring this fire under control what we know so far um, eyewitnesses tell us that around 4 30 a.m that's when the distress call was pushed through when they saw um the incipient stages of the fire here and shortly after that the ghana national fire service responded we are told that um close to nine fire tenders uh, have been put on this particular assignment so that they can bring this fire under control. But the strong winds are making it practically impossible and difficult to try and 
get this fire and control. Uh, many more personnel continue to arrive, uh, some of them who are being uh, more equipped to do the work that uh, they are doing. Just the latest year, not long ago, some of them were given breathing apparatus. They were given their gas mask, and they were given um, an oxygen tank as well, and then a lifeline, and then some other um, attire so that they can be able to work during the thick smoke um, that seems to be engulfing the entire Kentamanto business um, area. It's a very difficult situation. Again, for uh, shop owners who seem to have lost thousands of Ghana cities, what we are told is that uh, th this part of Kentamanto is not where exactly the selling or the trading happens. These are um, what, what you call storage areas. When they are done for the day, hawking their wares on the shoulders of the street and selling to different individuals, when, when it's night, this is where they store their items in huge uh, bags, like what you can see there, they call them bales, that is, is for um, uh, attire. So, uh, you, you, you'd find that most of the shops that are affected usually had bags like these. Many of them have been trying to rescue some of their items that are yet to be affected. But the latest here again is that some newer stores that were not initially affected um, have now caught fire, making it a, a more daunting tax and a difficult tax for the Ghana National Fire Service. Yeah, so many people also continue to arrive here uh, in their numbers, prominent individuals we have heard from the um, Interior Minister Ambrose Derry. Um, he's been here and I'm told that he's been comforting those who have lost uh, some of their worst in this inferno. And again, they've been, he's been assuring them that some, some sort of a help will come from government to them. Now, the, the, the irony for some of these affected shop owners is that they tell me two years ago, when a similar incident happened here, uh, that in a similar fashion, there were promises, their names were taken, their statements were taken, but no help was extended to them. Uh, so they, they see it as empty promises that is coming from um, Ambrose Derry again to the effect of trying to extend help to them. You have all seen um, the uh, Inspector General of the Ghana Police Service, uh, who we are told was also here to ascertain for himself the conditions, the situation on the ground. The last person who came here and just left here is the mayor of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly. Uh, she's also been giving assurances to some of the workers here on what exactly uh, government intends to do the way forward. As at yet, she's not willing to answer questions as to the structure of the Ghanaian market, especially in the business district of Accra. So, uh, back to the fire now. You can see that the smoke uh, continues to build up here. Uh, individuals continue to, I mean, without recourse to their safety or their lives, jump into the flames and try to rescue some of their uh, burning items. They are hoping that a bit later that they can get, they can use to be able to start life all over again. So, I mean, by, by way of announcement, this is what uh, is the latest that is happening here. Be able to control it anytime soon. There's smoke coming up, but you are close. What are they telling you? How many more minutes is it likely that the fire service can really put this under control? So, Brace, they don't want to put a number to it, nor time to it, but they tell us that uh, they have refocused all their, I mean, the, the entire machinery for the Ghana National Fire Service within the region. Uh, most of them have been redirected to join the party here so that this exercise can be done and dusted as soon as possible. It's been nearly five hours uh, since they've been fighting the fire. Um, they are nowhere close to the end, but... They continue to gain grounds, that's what I'm told. Uh, it's a difficult battle, but the Ghana National Fire Service assured both the affected individuals and the media that they are willing to win this fight at all costs. Saying, have you heard from some of them?
uh, the shop owners you mean yes i have heard from some uh, of the shop owners uh, as it stands now uh, currently none of them is around me but in my earlier interactions with them some of them tell me that they had uh, thousands of Ghana cities. There was an earlier example of Sandra, uh, who ran um, a maize, a, a beans shop with her mom. They stored um, harvested beans here. She tells me that in that particular shop, they had about 55 bags of beans. What they've been able to salvage right now, even amazed that charred ones is about 10 bags, with the rest all lost. So clearly losing close to 40 bags of beans mm. in just one uh, fire incident here a sad mm. situation for them here but also the downside to all this is that um some un unscrupulous individuals have um <clears throat> of a sort uh, are, are infiltrating the salvaging process here uh, and are also stealing from some of these already suffering shop owners um taking out scraps metals some of them taking items that were not banned uh, and running away with them. Some of them have been caught by the Ghana Police Service. And again, the police is here to assure um, individuals like that that their voice, though will be displayed in the open, uh, will be safe from individuals like that who are trying to profiteer from the already sad situation. Mm, interesting. But Bani still uh, be on the ground so that whatever happens, you get to give us the update. That's my colleague, Papani Ashley, uh, reporting to us from Cantonment to where fire is still raging on the fire service, we understand, uh, is doing everything it can to bring this under control. But uh, from that story, let's move on to others. And the Ashanti Regional Director of the National Service Scheme is alleged to have disrespected a nurse on duty at the Menshia Hospital for correcting his daughter's wrongful medical prescription. Alex Opokumensa is reported to have barged into the surgical ward of the hospital where his daughter is currently serving as a house officer to verbally abuse and threaten the nurse. According to eyewitnesses, the medical officer prescribed the wrong dosage for a two-year-old child with convulsion. The nurse, upon noticing the medical blunder, called on the young doctor to rectify the wrongful medication. However, they say the house officer took offense and reported the issue to her father, who later visited the facility to angrily insult the nurse who questioned his daughter's prescription. The Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association have since issued a communique calling for the immediate sack of the Ashanti Regional Boards of the NSS for his intercross behavior. We'll be speaking to the Nurse Association soon, but first, joining us live is my colleague Erastos Asari Donko with more Erastos. Uh, but do we know what really happened, as I uh, what the eyewitnesses have been telling us? All right, so um, Erasmus will be joining us later, but uh, let's speak to the Ghana Nurses and Midwives Association and Perpetual Fogi Ampofo is the president of the association. He, she joins us live with more. Now, thank you for your time. Have you reached out to Mr. Mengsa for his side of the story? <laughs> not at all. He's not uh, a personality of interest to us at this time. But let me first say good morning to all your listeners and thank you so much for having me on this issue. Mm. Well, if you say he's not a person of interest, then I guess probably you have details of, of what really happened. What do you know? Well, um, our Trent Regional branch went out to the headquarters to give us this report um, after we had actually um, seen this audio flying on social media um, with a voice, a male mm -hmm. voice. Um, vehemently insulting a nest mm -hmm. and using all sorts of words and throwing his weight about. Um, from what we learned from the report we got from our Ashanti Regional Chairman, this is a man who is the Regional Director for the National uh, Service yes. Team in the Ashanti region. And his daughter, a house officer, had an issue with a nest. And I must emphasize that these are um, issues that do happen within the course of our work. As a team, working for the interests of our patients and clients, 
These things do happen, but we have a way of sorting out these issues. And when it's beyond us as professionals, it's escalated to the management of the hospital. Mm. So it was very, very surprising that we will have a father intrude into a health facility and verbally assault a nurse and threaten her. So all that we are calling for is his removal. He has to be relieved of duty as a director. He's not fit to serve the public in his capacity as a general director in the Ashanti region. Public service is not meant to intimidate, it's not a question of people or undermine the responsibility of the role individual workers play in, within the society or within our communities or in our case within the hospital. He had absolutely no right to enter the facility and do what he did. And he is not fit to be a director in the Ashanti region. He should be removed immediately. And as an association, having deliberated on this issue extensively, we have also given timelines. And we have said within 72 hours, we expect the Public Services Commission and government for that matter to be removed. And without which, we are going to direct mention this hospital where our nurses and midwives are working to lay down their tools. If we still do not get a response, the whole Ashanti region is going to lay down their tools. And if we don't hear anything, we are going to take it up nationally, the whole nation, because this is an insult to us as nurses and midwives. Look, we are breaking our backs, working in very difficult situations, and we don't need this. We don't need this. The regional director of um, the National Service King, in the person of Mr. Alex Poku Mensa, should have known better as a director. He should have known that for a facility such as the British Hospital, there is definitely a leader in place, and that is the medical soup. There's also a nurse manager in place. He should have known where to direct his concerns or his complaints and had no right to press in that way that he did. All right. Uh, kindly hold the line for me. Let me take you to Kumasi because our colleague Erastos Azaridonko is joining us on phone with details of what we have gathered on this particular story. Erastos, what do we know so far? Erastos, if, if you can hear me. Um, okay. Uh, Erastos, if you can hear me, I'm asking of what we have gathered on the story from the ground well so uh what we do know for mm. now is that the doctor in question uh is a senior house officer started his house job on the first of november almost one month uh, with the uh, mencia uh, hospital mm. as we speak this issue uh, we are talking about happened on sunday you know uh he was starting his night cover uh with the hospital which ends at 8 a.m mm and had informed the ward in charge that because he had wanted to attend to some church activity, he wanted to do the ward rounds early so he can go to church. So it was a church that she kept receiving persistent calls uh, from the nurse in question. And when uh, she uh, responded to the call, the issue was that she had uh, uh, prescribed some IV food and paracetamol, which was not available on the night shift. And so per the system that they were running at Dementia Government Hospital, it wasn't possible uh, for any other doctor to change the medication. She had to uh, assist them change the medication. And that is why the nurse was calling her uh, to come over uh, to the hospital to make that change. But then uh, she had reported the matter she said she was not happy with the way the nurse spoke to her uh, on phone, so reported the matter to the father, uh, who stormed the hospital uh, to, I, I don't know, uh, try to put the nurse in her right position. And so what you hear in the audio there is the father who had stormed the uh, ward and was trying to uh, put her in her right place, according to what happened. Now, what we are learning now is that management has met uh, both parties, both individually and then collectively, uh, they have uh, listened to them both. The doctor in question has apologized to the nurse okay. uh, for her father's behavior. Mm. And the management has decided that 
the nurses are saying they are not happy with her and they cannot work with her. It looks like tensions are high. And so they've asked her to uh, uh, at least stay home in the interim uh, for Tempest to die down uh, before she can come back uh, when they have already spoken with the nurse and Tempest have gotten down, uh, she can resume her duties. Okay. So that is where we are at mm -hmm. the moment. So let's get this clear. Was it an issue of a wrongful prescription or a, a prescription that probably didn't have the medication that they didn't have, so they had to change it? No, it has nothing to do with wrongful prescription. In fact, the prescription that the doctor gave was an IV fluid and paracetamol. Mm -hmm. Now, they do not have that on the night shift. And so they had to wait till morning for the doctor to change to another form that they have, perhaps diclofenac or any other painkiller. Mm. So it, it's not an issue of wrongful uh, prescription uh, as uh, people are bandying around, but it, it was an IV fluid and paracetamol that they did not have on the night shift. And so they wanted her to come, change it to what they have, because the nurses cannot on their own initiate that or change what the doctor had prescribed. Mm. They needed the doctor to change that in the system so that they can administer something else aside uh, the no. IV uh, paracetamol uh, that he, she has prescribed. Okay. Uh, have we heard from the father since the issue broke? Uh, we've been trying to link up with the father. Her, his line is off. And so uh, we, have not, we have not been able to uh, speak to the father mm. as we speak. Okay, but can we say the hospital, everything at the hospital is calm now? Oh, for now, uh, things are calm. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the nurses who are saying that they, they cannot work with the uh, doctor, mm -hmm. uh, but then management is trying very hard uh, to speak with them and to let Tempest uh, calm down. And so they've asked the doctor to, in the interim, mm -hmm. uh, stay at home for some time for Tempest to uh, calm down before uh, she can resume her duty. Grateful Erastos. So that's uh, my colleague Erastos as I don't go there. Now Erastos mentioned the audio. Let's take a listen to the alleged voice of Alex Pokubinsa. Learn to respect me. I respect you. Oh, what you saw was a very useful day. I said that when I what reason? She's a doctor. This woman is. So what? That's the thing. Oh, yes, are you? Are you? Are you a important? What kind of behavior is that? That's why I asked you, what fuck did you do in secondary school? I did science. Frustrated. I was frustrated. frustrated. I, was I could have brought my daughter from to I mean, uh, uh, November to resort to you. What kind of behavior is that? Let me you. Men share your own yana. Men share your own yana. Who bought them? Men share your own yana. They are in a process. Men share your own. They will get up with patients. Has she run away from the patients? Has she run away from the patients? Has she run away from the patients? What kind of behavior is that? I don't know. What kind of behavior is that? I don't know. What kind of behavior is that? I don't know. You see, I can't have a good answer. You see, I can't have a good answer. And you talk to that phone, routine on phone. What kind of behavior is that? You said that what she told you. And you have executed. You have executed. You have executed your behavior. You told me I envy her. Yes. For what reason? Because you are envy her. For what reason? I envy her for what reason? I'm not a man. Who are you? 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 Sit down. I want to sit down. I want to listen to you. I don't know, yes, sir. People speak it to people with letters. I mean, who want your color, sir? Stupid idiot. Kevin. I'm very happy you are here. My name is Nenor. That's who you are. Who want it? Someone needs to phone up, go and up, go down. 
of the very um, altercation that happened between the man and the nurse. A quite an unfortunate incident, but yes, that uh, is a, a part of the voice that we had to play to you. Now, we also have on the line Perpetual Ofori uh, Ampofo, who is the president of the Ghana Nurses and Midwives Association. So, Perpetual, you heard our reporter there, the fact that the hospital has now uh, spoken to the parties involved the young doctor has been asked to stay aside for, for some time. Uh, how does that change your stance as an association? Uh, if you can the, hear me. The, mm -hmm. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. Mm. So, all right. Thank you very much. In response to that, I would like to say that it doesn't change your stance in any way. Okay. Um, for security reasons, I want to believe um, she's the house officer has been asked to stay away from the from facility. the facility for a while. Uh, in our case, with the with the nurse, um, she's currently um, also um, with the uh, Shanti Regional Executives um, because we are trying to even get her a psychologist to um, talk to her to counsel her. Mm -hmm. Because mm. it's been very traumatizing and uh, we are working on her in that regard and what we have issued in the statements is what we are standing by we believe strongly that this man mr alex poku mensa is not fit to hold any public um any public office okay and therefore he must he must be relieved of his duties we have also called on our ashanti regional branch to report the matter to the police he had absolutely no right to do what he did, and it should, the police should be informed. We have also asked that the, the management of the hospital also take steps to actually train the professionals um, working at the facility about teamwork and team building. It is very, very, very crucial. Everybody in the medical team is important, and there's need for us to respect one another. And we understand as a human institution, we can find ourselves stepping on somebody's toe at one point or the other. But it will be very important that um, we have internal systems to, to resolve. And every worker must know about these systems. And there's no need for anybody, anybody to bring in a family relations, whether father, mother, brother, sister, whatever it is. To come and behave the way Mr. Alex Pokumenstan behaved at the facility on Sunday. It just was very, very uncalled for, and he needs to be sacked immediately. Okay. All right. Grateful to you, Perpetual, for joining us. She is president of the Ghana Nurses and Midwives Association. Now, we tried uh, to speak to Mr. Uh, Pokumenstan to get a side of the story, but uh, we couldn't get through to him. When we do, we'll bring that in our subsequent bulletins. But to other stories now, Vice President Dr. Mahamudu Baumia has said that uh, uh, Ghana will do uh, everything to tackle recent surge in violence by armed insurgent groups, and, uh, insurgent groups and criminal gangs in some countries in the Sahel. He says that have resulted in the displacement of about 2.5 million people this year, speaking at the launch of the Gulf of Guinea Northern Region Social Cohesion Soko project at Bogatanga in the Upper East region. The vice president said the last five years have been the most violent on record and countries need to take measures to stop the activities of extremist groups from spreading to other parts of the African continent. Correspondent Albert Sorry reports. 
The Gulf of Guinea Northern Regions Social Cohesion or SOCO project aims to improve regional collaboration and the socio-economic and climate resilience of border zone communities in the target northern regions of the Gulf of Guinea countries exposed to conflict and climate risks. The northern regions of the Gulf of Guinea countries include Benin, La Côte d'Ivoire, Ghana, and Togo. The SOCO project also aims to proactively prevent the spread of conflict from the Sahel and strengthen local institutions, economic opportunities, and public trust. The project is financed from the World Bank International Development Association to the tune of 450 million US dollars. Of this amount, Ghana has been allocated 150 million at the launch of the SOCO project at Bolgatanga here in the Upper East region, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia gave some details about the project. The project has been conceived and designed to address the effects of the spillover of conflicts and extremism from the Sahel region, reduce vulnerability because of exposure to the impacts of climate change, the 450 million US dollars multi-country credit facility. It focuses mostly on border communities in these regions where the citizenry, especially women and youth, are exposed and are susceptible to the threats of terrorism from the Sahel region. Thus, the project focuses on dealing with issues relating to fragility, conflicts, and violence. He said, recent surging violence by armed insurgent groups and criminal gangs in some countries in the Sahel have resulted in the displacement of about 2.5 million people this year. Together, the northern parts of these Gulf of Guinea countries have become a unique converging point for multiple crises. The recent unrelenting insurgent violence by armed insurgent groups and criminal guns in some countries in the Sahel have resulted in the internal displacement of about 2.5 million people this year, which is quadruple the number of displaced persons in years 2019. Available data suggests that the Sahel also hosts over 850,000 refugees, mainly from Mali. Indeed, the past five years have been the most violent on record, with over 12,000 conflict events and 50,000 fatalities since June 2019. Country Director for World Bank, Pierre-Franc Laporte, said the multifaceted nature of the Gulf of Guinea Northern Region's social cohesion project makes it challenging. But he was confident that government and stakeholders were up to the task. The World Bank has also other programs aimed at addressing some of the drivers of inequality and deprivation, including improving forest and landscape management, increasing connectivity through improved roads and digital access, and addressing particularly vulnerable communities through social protection programs. In our pipeline, there are also other operations, including the Youth Employment Project, the Agriculture Tree Project, which are upcoming in the next few months. The SOCO project will be implemented by the Ministry of Local Government, Decentralization and Rural Development. A total of 48 metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies in the six regions of the north will benefit from the project. Dan Bochi is Minister for Local Government, Decentralization and Rural Development. This program will be supervised by the regional coordinators. I forgot that our regional house of chiefs will have a direct role in monitoring. Each regional house of chief will send two representatives to the regional coordinators. 
this year. The SOCO project will run for approximately five years. For Joy News, Albert Sorry, reporting from Bolgatanga. Just watching News Desk here on the Joy News channel. We'll take a quick break or we'll return with business. Stay with us. Hi, good morning. Welcome to business. My name is Daryl Kwao. The British High Commissioner to Ghana, Harriet Thompson, has hinted at more investors coming to Ghana from the United Kingdom, a move that will transform the productive sectors of the economy. According to her, though offshore investors are monitoring happenings between Ghana and the International Monetary Fund, they're keen to leverage the advantages of various productive sectors of the economy. She spoke to Joy Business at their countdown to the disco event organized by the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce. British High Commissioner said investors from the UK are interested in investing in the agriculture, automobile, and manufacturing sectors of the Ghanaian economy. This, she believes, will ensure economic stability. Yeah, investors in the UK are still incredibly interested in Ghana. There's huge appetite to find out what's going on here, what are the opportunities here. Of course, there's interest in and challenges as well, um, but there's real confidence in the long term in Ghana as an investment destination. The connections between the people in the two countries makes that so much stronger. We're constantly working to improve the business environment for Ghanaian companies who want to do business in the UK and for UK companies who want to do business in Ghana. So we have a working group of officials from my High Commission team and from the Ministry of Trade and Industry here in Ghana. Looking to understand what are the barriers to doing more business between our two countries, focusing on the most important ones and doing the work that we need to do in order to overcome those barriers. President for the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce, Ajoba Chiyama, reiterated commitment to protect members, to leverage various opportunities to expand their operations. And we are encouraging our, um, the people here to let down their hair, have fun, make sure that you talk to somebody you haven't spoken to before and leave here with new business contacts that can help move your business forward. Um, more of the same, but much, much, much better. As you're aware, um, since 2020, um, we've had to put a hold on physical events. So 2022 has given us a chance to show what we can do. And so we're expecting that our member companies would show a lot more interest in our events, provide us with sponsorship like we have tonight and then also actively participate. We want to see um, our member businesses doing well as businesses, growing their businesses, so that our chamber can also grow from strength to strength. The UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce says it will continue to support the Ghanaian economy. Now, Ghana will commence the complete disconnection of all SIM cards that have completed stage one, but have not completed stage two, uh, of SIM card registration from the 1st of December uh, this year. As such, it, the MTN Ghana is expected to deactivate about 5.7 million subscribers' SIM cards uh, from the 1st of December. Here's more in this report. Said this year, a little over 22.1 million of MTN Ghana subscribers had successfully linked their Ghana card to their SIM cards while 16.4 million had successfully completed the bio capture phase or stage two. The move is in compliance with the directive from the National Communications Authority communicated to all telecom operators in a meeting held on November 17. In a statement, the telecom market leader said it had already complied with the first stage of the directive by deactivating the data services of SIM cards that have not fully registered with the Ghana card on November 20th as directed. It urged customers who do not have Ghana card to contact the nearest National Identification Authority office for assistance. It mentioned that MTN Ghana will provide these customers the needed support with full registration after they have successfully received their Ghana card. The statement concluded that MTN Ghana is committed to the national SIM registration exercise to build an accurate customer database to help minimize fraud in the country. All right, and that's business post is coming up, Steve.
Welcome back from the break. Time for us to bring you sports. And Lawrence is here with the latest. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Sam. How are you? I'm good, and you? I am good. I mean, from what happened yesterday, uh, you, you I, have I to I think it's, it's a good performance, right mm. from... I think the moment the moment we started from our game against Portugal, the boys mm. wanted to give their everything on the field. Yeah. Yesterday, we saw what they are capable of doing. I think everyone will be glad with what the boys have, have done. But then there's still a, um, a concern in the yeah. team. Because the yeah. fact that we've considered two goals mm. in less than five minutes, it's, yeah. a, it's a bit of a worry. Yeah. We saw that against Portugal and then we've seen against South Korea. So we need to check that aspect of our game. But all in all, I think it was a good performance. I think our coach should listen to what the South Korean guy said ahead of our game. The that minutes. we seem to leave Space a set defense. space yeah. at our defense. And that, that's exactly what they did. Yeah, so they exploited true. it. That's they true. knew it. Yeah. And my, my, worry, um, my worry as well is the fact that we allowed the opponents too much space on mm. the ball. Because mm. if you look at the second goal that we conceded, if you look at the space, um, the timing of the guy receiving the pass, Daniel Mati closing him down, it was way too far. Mm. He could have closed him down earlier, even before he received the pass. Okay. By all the same, we, we got all three yeah. points and then yeah. we move forward. Um, yeah. You know, we are heading into the final round of fixtures. Yeah. And then for the African interest, Senegal will be up against Ecuador today. Today? Yeah. Okay. That, that game is at 3 p.m. Oh. So because it's the final round of fixtures, um, Group A play at 3 p.m. All two games in Group A okay. will come at 3 p.m. And then the Group B games will also come off at 7 p.m. Okay. This this um, Senegal's worry at the moment. They are on three points, and then they play Ecuador, who are on four points. Ecuador are leveled on the same points with Netherlands, who also have four. But they play Qatar. So if if you are a, Seneg a Senegal fan, you are thinking probably Netherlands are, are beating. Uh, yes, yeah. we, we know it's football, yeah. but then. On paper, you know the Netherlands are beating Qatar, which mm -hmm. gives them seven points. Mm -hmm. So, in order to qualify from that group, you just have to beat Ecuador, Ecuador. at all points. Yeah. Mm. By all means, mm. you need to beat Ecuador to secure they will. qualification into the nation. So, they will. I think it's an uphill for Senegal, but then nothing is impossible. No, no, You've you seen them turn up mm. good when no one expected them. And again, this tournament has taught us that for anything at all, anything can beat any team at, at any, any time. Point. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So, that, that's one thing they would, they would need to check. And in Group B, another interesting fixture. Prior to the start of the tournament, there were some rules players saying they can't wait to play England, England and then knock them out in the final round of the season. Guess what? It's the other side of the story now because England are on four points, Wales have one point heading into the final game. US play Iran. Okay. US need to win as well to mm. qualify to the next okay. round. Of. So it's, mm. it's a bit dicey mm. for Senegal and then for Wales. Okay. I have a plea for you, sports presenters. Please take your time and, on the Black Stars. I've seen people talking about Inaki. Let's take I think he, he, will find his, he will find his exactly. He will find his feet. So that's my time comes. You. Yep. And that's sports on the bulletin. That's how we wrap it up. There's more news on myjoyonline.com. My name is Samuel Kojo. Brace to enjoy your morning and enjoy the rest of our programs. Good morning. Thank you.